All right, without further ado, you're not up here to see me. You are up here to see the actress who's been in, I was reading her bio, like everything, literally. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to bring up Jade Saxon to the stage. Give her a warm round of applause. Hi. All right. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> Happy Friday. Woo. I got to climb up here. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm enjoying uh, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you here yesterday? I was here yesterday. Um, probably, maybe, I, got, I don't know. Y'all, some of y'all were here yesterday. Maybe I got a chance to see some of y'all. Uh, yeah, I was here all day yesterday. Are you here all weekend? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, dark. Okay. And now light. Really bright. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> you have uh, any other fun panels lined up for this weekend? Um, yes. <laughs> I don't remember what they're called. I know I have one at like 8.45 tonight. Oh, cool. I can't remember which one that is. And then I have another one tomorrow. Um, or no, I'm sorry, on Sunday as well. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think I was supposed to have you tomorrow for Women of Anime. Oh, yes. I'm on that one, too. See, I, I don't I have the schedule in front of me. I double booked. Well, actually, triple booked with panels. I have uh, a, a comic book panel, your panel, and then the wrestling show kind of overlapping each other. Popular. So I'm, they took me out of the Women of Anime to kind of give me a little bit of time to get between them. So I am sorry. <laughs> I will not be with you tomorrow. I'm very sad about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so... Uh, you guys, we have questions, right? You know that, right? Come on up, <laughs> line up. If not, I'm going to start asking the weirdest stuff. I'm pretty sure you guys want to know like more about stuff. what she's done and her, yeah. her bodies of work. I was actually <laughs> reading uh, your name comes from your parents' name. Yes, uh, so it's an acronym for Jimmy and David. And my mom's name is Jimmy, and my dad's name is David, and yeah, they were hippies <laughs> and made by name. And that's why everyone calls me Jad, because it has a weird, like, macron, has a macronized vowel. But that's kind of, sometimes people do that, some people don't. And, like, I, I stopped crediting that way, like, really early on, because the first couple times I saw the credits roll on uh, animes that I did, it said J question mark D. <laughs> so I was like, well, maybe I'll just be Jad. It's, it's all good. I'll explain it to everyone. But yeah, it's a it's a really unique name, and um, yeah, and today's my mom's birthday. <laughs> I'm trying to post a video for her, and I was trying to find her handle on Twitter, and I couldn't find it because I'm pretty sure she doesn't really. Do it. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, I actually wanted to ask a question about one of uh, the shows you did ADR on. Uh huh. Uh, do you remember Silver Guardian? I do, yeah. Uh, what was that project like since it was a very weird show that was, <laughs> the rules were constantly changing and things were a little on the inconsistent side? What was it like ADRing mm -hmm. something that crazy? Um, so for those of you who may not know what ADR is, is and I'm, I'm also an ADR director as well as a voice actor. And Silver Guardian was a project that I did about a year ago. Has anyone seen Silver Guardian? A few people. And it it's, has since then had a, a season two, which was uh, directed by uh, someone else. But um, it was a really interesting project. It was uh, originally adapted from a Chinese manhua. And so it had like a kind of different layers of uh, adaptation that took place. And it was also a uh, what we call broadcast dub, like one that comes out every week and that we adapt and dub very quickly within like two to four weeks from uh, it coming out in Japan. And so it, I was always like, what's going to happen next? Because like I was trying to go online and like read these like fan translations of the Chinese uh, manga, and so <laughs> I never knew what was going to happen. Um, so it was a little wacky because like all the time was out of place, and like uh, you couldn't tell where you were in the timeline. But I liked how wacky it was, and I really loved working with Kyle Phillips, who was the lead in that show, as well as Amber Lee Connors, and John Swayze was really fun. I'd never worked with him before, so it was really cool to get to work with those people. Yeah, thanks for asking about that. No, thank you. My friend and I could not just stop laughing. Like you, we just, we had to know what was going to happen next. I know. I also had a really fun time. I played Wan Choi, the little kitty cat in that show. We love that cat. Yes. 
Hello. Hi, hi. Hey, Jade. So, interesting question I have. So, how is it like working with Funimation? Like, I know they're, they're actually the largest anime studio, and now they're actually owned by Sony Pictures, one of the biggest uh, leaders in the film industry. So, how was your experience working with Funimation, and especially since how Funimation, it, since anime and as well as the entertainment industry is, is growing, so what do you see, and also b besides despite your experiences as well, how do you see the an anime going, going towards the indus industry in the near future? Um, okay, <laughs> a lot to unpack there. Um, yeah. I, Funimation for me has just been a playground and also yeah. a place to grow. I mean, I started there 11 years ago, uh, just as kind of a, like a kid voice actor, not really a kid, I mean, I was like 24, but like, I, <laughs> you know, very young and like, you know, learning how to do it all and then, you know, getting more and more roles and like watching it go from, you know, the DVD based like system where it took probably six months to a year to get what was out in Japan, out here and dubbed to the, to the fans here. And uh, now it's, you know, sometimes we have four week turnarounds, two week turnarounds, sometimes same day turnarounds, sometimes simul uh, releases. So that, all of that in the past three years has been really exciting to be a part of. And because of that, there's been a lot more opportunity and a lot more growth for myself personally in, in becoming an ADR director, uh, a part-time, and now I'm full-time directing two shows uh, every week. And um, so it's just been a lot, of, a lot of growth. And with the announcement of Sony taking over, um, I don't know, I'm really excited to see what happens with that. Um, you know, I just think it, it gives more possibility and more reach and more, you know, equity for what we can invest in. But, I mean, they're not really talking to me about any of those decisions. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is all way above my head. But, I mean, it's, it's pretty exciting to have such a huge, a huge... Um, entertainment giant like be interested in anime and recognize the 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 reach and the kind of fan base that anime has grown mm -hmm. uh over the last 20 years in the united states um and you know everywhere in the world really uh so it's kind of cool to see that um hopefully that answers your questions i'm not really yeah. sure you know what to expect for the future i really hope that yeah. You know, we continue to get more and more amazing content and more and more stuff that we can give to fans, uh, what they want, more, uh, I think we're ho hoping to have a kind of influence in, in telling uh, some of the Japanese creators, like, we want more sequels to things, like, we want this show to come back, you know, yeah. like, this is what we like, and uh, hopefully that happens. Yeah, thank you so much. Hi. Hi, hi. Okay, so what would, do you feel it was your most difficult character to voice as a voice actress, and why? Uh, the most vocally challenging uh, role that I've ever done was in a show called Toriko. Has anyone ever seen Toriko? Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> it's a show all about food, and it's really wacky. And I played a penguin named Yoon. And uh, it was just like all that he ever said was his own name to emote everything and say everything. And it was really high pitched and very squeaky and like very hard on my voice to be up like, you know, like really high, like for long periods of time. And like also his like little penguin, spoiler alert, his like penguin parents like died kind of violently and he's like crying like nonstop <laughs> and all of that. So that was a really a vocally challenging role for me for sure, yeah. Thanks right. for the question. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, good morning, Jay. Good morning. Um, so one of my favorite roles of yours was um, your first major role as Masako Hara in Ghost Hunt. So what was your experience in getting your first major role? Um, I prior to that I had really only been like bit parts and tiny parts in uh, my very first show was called Sasami's Magical Girls Club mm -hmm. and then I also did some stuff in Hell Girl and um, so I had worked with Tyler Walker who's the director of Hell Girl and he called me in for an audition for that and like mm -hmm. I just thought 
This is just, you know, when you're auditioning early on, like usually it's just another opportunity to kind of like show up your skills and then maybe you'll get like a bit or something. And so when I found out I was going to be playing that role, I was honestly kind of like simultaneously very excited but very terrified. <laughs> so um, to kind of take that on and get the opportunity to do that. But um, I always say like he mostly trained me in how to do anime and how to, because a lot of the times, like even if you're already a trained actor and like working in in that field and have done a lot of that, it's just different when you're doing anime and when you're doing, um, and when you're dubbing something to learn how to do those, those different skills. So it was, it was a ride and it was intense and it was fun and I learned so much from that. And um, it, that was a really cool show too. It was really cool to do like a, a scary kind of story. And I was, I was excited that she had she was kind of dynamic in a way in that she had an opportunity to just kind of be possessed by a, uh, yes. a ghost one episode. And oh, like, yes. I got to show off, uh, you know, a wackier side of me, which was really, really mm -hmm. cool. Which I think, honestly, down the line, because of that, led to uh, Hadana and Is This a Zombie? <laughs> I really think that had a part in that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks so much. I was actually going to say that I think I, I've learned from light novels there's more to the story and the manga, like Dimension W, there's things they leave out, like the whole kid gets uh, wrecked by a car thing when the car fell on the kid. In the manga, that was like a whole plan of a bad guy that says, I'm going to reap the insurance. I also want the, I know you can't, uh, I also have an Is This a Zombie Volume 1 for you to sign when we get down there. Awesome. But uh, I was I have a lot of questions, but so little time. Uh, was there any way... Also, Mira wanted bigger boobs in the manga. She said, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't object to that. If, if that is that 2 PG-13? It was from the source. Uh, the other one was, was there any lines that made you like laugh in the booth with this is a zombie because it was so wacky? I don't... What was the first question? I'm sorry. Uh, the, is this a zombie? Did you get any like, like retakes? Because there were so many wacky... like. Double entendres. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Especially any time that Austin Tyndall was recorded before me. I mean, <laughs> he's ridiculous in that show and so, so funny. And I actually really like playing opposite of him. And I've, I've had the opportunity to do that a couple other times. Um, one in... Oh, my gosh, I just forgot the name of it. I played a character named Guri in um, Love Tyrant where I got to also play opposite Austin Tyndall. I, I really like playing comedy off of him. It's really, really funny. Yeah, he was in some pretty weird, uncomfortable situations in Is This a Zombie? And uh, I found that very funny, yeah. <laughs> I, also, I also do role play for Kyoko on the one that stabbed him in the, in the Tumblr. She gets into a lot of not safe for work on my side. <laughs> she would though, I mean, she's kind of the bad girl, you know? Yeah. Does that make, is that weird? I'm not sure if Harna, you'd have to earn it, like a dating sim. Could you imagine that? Dating sim of Is This a Zombie? <laughs> <laughs> no. You Thank heard, you. You heard Harna. And uh, Konaku also punches you a lot, but also it's not <laughs> That would be a fun fight, Konako versus Harna. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask about, uh, since you uh, dubbed uh, Megami inside Food Wars, it's... Uh, <laughs> Is it like, how is it playing her role since she's like a character that started off as shy but had multiple breaking points? And do you think that she can grow farther than she is now? I definitely think she can grow a little more for sure. Um, the more she comes into her own and the more they, you know, kind of explore some of her, uh, her backstory a little more and like where she comes from. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite things about like trying to get that role and like auditioning for that role was the direction that uh, the that Kyle gave me as the director which was um, just act like like the whole time just act like you have to you're about to pee your pants <laughs> like that is mega me yeah. just um, you gotta yeah you, know, you just gotta you know like the whole time like pretend like you just really have to pee um, and that's mega me yeah <laughs> But yeah, it's been it's been really fun, and I really I'm really hoping that we get to do season three soon. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Um, very excited to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. Uh, my favorite role from you is 
Kana from Ms. Kobayashi's Maid Dragon. Um, how does it feel to wo do the voice of a little like girl, knowing that you're like an adult? I really love it, and she's so chill, like for the most part, <laughs> save like the very her introduction a little bit. After that, like she's just so chill and relaxing uh, every time I go in there. Plus, she's just like the cutest little cutie poof. <laughs> I love her so much. Um, I just really, really pray for more. And I think like there's enough like love out there and like fan base out there for that to happen. Yeah. So raise your voices yeah. to Whoa. the anime gods and say please. <laughs> yes. I love, 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 love playing Kana. I love that whole cast. I love that whole show. I just think it's it's really fun. It's really, it's got a lot of heart, which I I really like and really like and can relate to a lot. Yeah. Um, how was it uh, working with Jamie? I love working with Jamie, and actually, um, you know, she's she's just really funny. She's got great comic chops, um, and she's you know just super talented. She's one of the the best in the biz. And uh, this uh, this season actually, uh, has anyone been watching High School DxD season four? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I'm directing season four, so I've got to direct Jamie this whole season, which has been really fun. And there hasn't been enough Rias, though. Where's Rias? Come on. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> um, also, um, I made a drawing for you to sign it. Hopefully you'll like it when you go sign. I will love it. Okay. And no. then, if you can, can you do a little bit of the Kana voice for me, if you can? That's... Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's wicked. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, that's always my <laughs> lovely treble. Um, first of all, I'm a huge fan of Smite, and I love your role as Nebula Medusa. Oh, okay, awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's the first I've ever heard anyone say that, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, it usually is, but yeah, no, you bring a lot of character to that uh, goddess and helps wreak havoc on the battlefield. But um, awesome. my question for you was, when you're recording your dramatic roles, such as um, Hachin or your comedic roles, such as, or adorable roles as uh, Kana, which roles, I guess, do you prefer working on drama, comedy, or like something etchy like High School DD, or where, where do you always find your most enjoyment, I guess, would be the question. I, I wish I could like tell you like what you wanna hear, but I like it all for different reasons. Um, I think actors really crave like those dramatic, like meaty, like hearty kind of things like Hotchin from Michiko and Hotchin with like a 24 episode arc of storyline and character and like really digging deep and like having a lot of like mo emotional range and just sort of like a journey of sorts. Like that's very cathartic and it's very cool to get that opportunity to uh, kind of explore those, um, that range and those emotions. But then, I mean, Konako just says all these sassy one-liners that are real fun to try and just like snap out there and like play around with. And we had a lot of fun with the writing this season. Um, Kristen McGuire wrote this season, but also we have Jamie who's written past seasons and Josh Greeley who's a writer and like me in there, like just, you know, sometimes improving lines as well as Tyson Reinhardt and like all that. And that's really fun. Um, but like Kana, like she's so chill and like I was saying before, she's so chill and fun and it's just a different vibe, like um, she's definitely more relaxing when I've left the booth and everything, but I don't, I don't really have a, uh, I don't have a favorite. I like to act, I like to be in there, I like to see where these characters are going. I mean, that's, that's what I live for. I live for it. I live for it. Yeah, well, so. Thank you for all that you do. You're fantastic. Oh, thank you Appreciate so much. It. Thanks for noticing me, Hi, Senpai. <laughs> see your hat. It's his hat. His hat on. Okay. <laughs> so, what was your reaction when you found out about the major art style change in the latest season of High School DxD? I get this question a lot, and I mean, there are parts of it that I wasn't, I didn't really, I don't know. There were parts that I noticed, I will say. Like, the fact that they changed Rias' eye color and stuff like that. Um, I... I don't know, some of it was, some of the colors were different to me, which was a little like, whoa, what's happening there? But I, I really didn't, I don't know, I didn't find it distracted me too much from what was happening from the, the characters, the voices that we were giving them and like the, the ridiculous, ridiculous story that was happening. 
Um, so it didn't really bug me that much, but I've heard some feedback where people really, really didn't like it. But um, hopefully, you know, we still told a good story and people still enjoy it. Yeah. Well, heads up. I read the light novel and it only gets worse. <laughs> I know it, well, I don't want to, we haven't, the dub isn't out yet for, we're still recording it for episode 12, but if you saw it on Crunchyroll, you know that it seems like maybe they're setting up for a season five. Hopefully, that'd be cool. <laughs> Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, first, as always, thank you for all of your hard work over the years, uh, especially one of my favorite series, Log Horizon. Uh, I remember watching it when it streamed on Crunchyroll and being really excited, that wonder What's the dub going to be like? And just hearing you knock that out of the park. Uh, is there anything you can sh uh, that was particularly surprising or challenging or just you want to share in general about that series? Because I love it. And I just want to hear anything uh, you remember about it. And can you do the voice? Um, you know, her voice like is, sometimes reminds me of Konako a little bit. Because um, um, they're both like, you know, just like kind of cold and like over it kind of feeling. <laughs> Um, that was just a fun process because it was like one of my first uh, Sentai projects, one of my first major Sentai projects going down there to, to work on that show and, and work with those people down in Houston. So that was really fun. Um, I don't know if I remember any of her lines. It's been a really long time. But, so I don't know if I could do that voice for you. But um, I thank you so much for your support on that. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you. For what it's worth, I showed the DVD to my D&D &D club and with it, everybody first just looking at their laptops, their phones, and about half an hour later, like they were all just around the TV. What show is this? Log, Log Horizon. Horizon. Log Horizon. Oh. I, have an I have another comment concerning Crunchyroll. Like I said, it's kind I know it's about the story, but when you get the censors, it's come on, you just censored what you uncensored one, two, three. Here, censored DXD. Come on. <laughs> I know. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I don't know. I'm a little bit like over. <laughs> It, it, People it does desensitize you to the nudity after a while. Like, it'll happen. You'll get it later. Don't worry. Yeah. Either DVD. I don't mean to be a pervert, but, it, well, <laughs> EC is the main, so, yes. <laughs> that sounds like EC. I don't mean yeah. to be a pervert, but. But I also just, pull, I like the resurrecting dead characters. The visor, which she killed in three, was kind of funny. Spoiler but, alert. <laughs> but remember that thing that was, apparently in the manga, it didn't, ha it didn't shoot booby acid. It just had spears to attack you. So, difference in manga and anime. Yeah, there's always, just like from any sort of book to movie adaptation, there's always things they take out uh, and things they change. It's Thank hard you. To, it's hard to keep PG rating in when you're talking about DXD. <laughs> well, it's not. Yeah, it's not uh, PG. Yeah, but that, that's what I meant. Supercon's PG for all audiences, but DXD is hard to oh, talk is it? about. I don't know. There's. Is it PG? Are we in a PG panel? What? <laughs> this is so a PG a, panel today. We are in a PG panel. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you yeah. for your, your censorship. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. So one of your one of your my favorite roles in the of your anime shows that you dubbed have to be Kana from his Kobayashi's Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I love that show. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice. So do you have any upcoming uh um upcoming dubbing uh works for anime? Because I, I love watching animes because every time I get off of work or I finish studying college, I just want to go home and actually go on my computer and, and watch some anime, I either pop in my Blu-ray or I watch it on Funimation now or High Dive. So do you have any upcoming anime, anime dubbing works? Well, yeah. Um, you know, Funimation is starting a new season. Uh, I don't know that I can, like, say any of them yet, but, like, stay tuned. I think there's two shows that, for sure, I will be acting in that I'm really excited about. Um, I think they'll probably premiere next week or the week after, but that's what's really cool about kind of how the broadcast things are going is, like, every three months now, we get a new season and all new shows and, like, or some continuing shows like My Hero Academia and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, so keep your eye out, and I'll be posting and stuff about these two new shows. But I'm also continuing to uh, ADR direct for Kakarillo, Bed and Breakfast of the Spirits, which is continuing on. And then I'm going to be directing one new show, which I'm still casting this week, and I will stay tuned. I'm so excited about yeah. it. <laughs> it's awesome. The hint is there's, there's um, lots of girls in it. There you go. This is not much of a hint, is it? <laughs> I can't say, but I'm like, 
chomping at the bit. I'm so freaking stoked about this, and I'm so excited that they, I requested to direct it, and I'm so excited that they entrusted me to direct it, so I'm very excited. Uh, also, oh, also, Steins Gate is continuing, so I'll be continuing to do Ferris. Yeah! Yay, meowsters! <laughs> I know. See, keep keep saying it. Say it as much as you can. All right. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering um, when you go into the booth and do your voices for you know, there's like some you do like more like action type, and there's some that are more you know um, inappropriate. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, sure. Is there like um, certain like way that you're thinking like, okay, I have to do this for like this, like how's that um, the mix of like doing like something like more like action to more like, um, I guess, EG, I guess. Um, I mean, I, I, it's, it's cool that we're all, or for me personally, that I've been doing it so long that I know the people directing and I know the people in the room and I'm for the most part comfortable enough to, you know, be like, okay, let's do this, like, this is happening, and it's, you know, and that's the thing, like, it's not me, like, I'm not doing those things, like, I'm not on camera, like, this is a character, and even if I were on camera doing it, like, that's not me either, like, I'm acting, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what's cool about it, that's why it's cool to get to do those things, because it's not really you, and, like, you're pretending, and you're playing, and you're having a good time. Um, so it's just, for me, a matter of like feeling comfortable and like feeling like I can have the space to work with the, the material that's given to me and have the time to kind of work through it. Um, but I mean, honestly, like a lot of that stuff, like I've, I mean, I've done, I've done so much of it. It's just, comes kind of naturally. Just, yeah. I mean, honestly, I think the, the, the more action kind of stuff is the stuff that took longer for me to learn how to do and like all of the kind of like. Because I feel like it's easier, well, to uh, PG panel, it's easier to, uh, you know, learn how to breathe a certain way and, like, make a certain <laughs> noise, um, you know, from stuff that I've already done in my life. But I've never been, like, a, a, a cat that had the strength of, like, 50 men. That I've never done before. So, you know, it's, it's harder to learn how to, like, you know, fight a giant demon, I think, than the other thing. Okay. Which is more natural for, for us all, <laughs> if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, that answers my question. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. So, have you ever been so flustered or choked up on a line that you had to take a minute to recompose yourself? And if so, what was the line? Um, yeah. Uh, two, I can think of two. One was, has anyone seen um, Myriad Color Phantom World? If you haven't. I recommend. Uh, it wasn't one that was like broadcast. I think it might be out like on Funimation now though, um, but you can get it on DVD as well. Uh, I played a little like, it was weird. She was like a fairy, but she was dressed up like a genie, like like almost like a la I Dream of Genie, like kind of the, the little hair and pants and everything. But her name was uh, Ruru, but she actually had a way, way longer name that I can't repeat because I could barely get through it. It took me, um, Three separate days, like three separate attempts, like homework, going home, there might have been some tears, I don't know. <laughs> there might have been just me telling the director, like, I really, I don't know if it's gonna happen. Lots of help from the engineer, because like, her full name was like, she was just rattling off like, but like, I can rattle that off, like whatever, like it's fine right here, but it was actually specific, like I had to get the right, like specific vowels and how many there were, and yeah, that was a lot. It took a long time. Um, the other one was, you know, just a more embarrassing one, if you will. It was from the OVA for Hog and I. Um, so I don't know if I can say that one, but I got real flustered and I blushed and the director was just giggling at me. Um, yeah, but I probably can't say that one here, but yeah, some of those ones that you're like, what? what am I even saying? Like, what is this? Because, <laughs> like, you know, OVAs go off the rails. Like, what are they even about sometimes? Nobody knows. <laughs> Weirdness. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, so, Jade, I know that you work as both a uh, ADR director and a voice actor. Um, I'm not really familiar with, with, you know, what ADR directors do. So... 
Um, can you like explain to me how that works, and also what's like the biggest difference between you know doing an ADR, being an ADR director, and uh, doing you know regular voice acting? Okay, uh, yeah, I'll answer your last question first. Um, the biggest difference is, is as an actor, you just show up with your toolbox of like experience and knowledge and um, imagination and play, and you walk in and you look at the script and you go. Um, as an ADR director, you're overseeing the entire process. You, from beginning to end, you're getting the adapted script, you're reviewing it, you're reviewing its comparison to the Japanese and checking to make sure that it's kind of like what you envisioned for the adaptation. You're casting every single role. Um, so sometimes that means you have to hold auditions for things. Sometimes that means you're just going off of knowledge of other actors you've worked with. Um, you're directing every single actor that comes in. You're going all the way through post-production, through mix, through everything. So you're overseeing every last bit of it, and you're kind of like the captain in charge of that ship. <laughs> and you, yeah, you kind of are doing it all. So it's a lot. It's a lot more work, a lot more research, a lot more investment. Um, I assume it's still pretty fun to do that, though, right? I mean, I love it. It's still like you're still. I was talking to another. Uh, ADR director the other day, Chris George, who uh, currently directing Steins Gate and Black Clover. And um, he t I was like, I was realizing because I was directing him in something and I was like, I'm clenching my teeth the entire time I'm directing you. Like, I'm, like you find yourself doing it too with the actor in the booth. And so like after a whole, after a session of acting, you can feel tired, but after a whole day of directing when like you've gone through every emotion with them, like you're just like, I need some wine. <laughs> <laughs> like I need a glass of wine, please. Yeah, but it's really fun because, gosh, you get to work with so many amazing, cool people. Like, I can, that's what's awesome is, like, I can pick whoever I want of all the people, like, and I get to hang out with them for an hour, too, and, and see them, watch them do their magic, you know? Like, watch Jamie, watch Josh, you know, watch all those people do, do their thing. It's really fun. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So, I've heard a lot of voice actors talk about um, recording lines at home and going in their closet or their bathrooms to record lines because the sound's better. Do you have any stories about having to go into a closet or something to record a line? I, I've tried some of that, but like honestly, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I'm lazy, I'm gonna be real with y'all, and I don't. I just like, and I honestly sometimes like the echo sometimes that I get. Like, I, I like how it kind of makes my voice sound when I'm not, like, in a soundproof room sometimes for an audition that I'm recording. So I have done it. I have, like, gotten behind my all my clothes. And mostly because, like, I have a cat who will just like to do things to destroy a take when I'm, like, trying to record something. And I'm like... <sighs> Like, she'll just be knocking something over or scratching. So sometimes, yeah, I have definitely had to do that before. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, here's another question. So uh, since you are also an ADR director, um, how do you feel about whenever you have to actually uh, direct yourself in a role, or do you like to direct your own uh, self in a role? I really liked it with Wan Choi and Silver Guardian, because I was just like, meow. I was just meowing. I was just a cat. <laughs> so that was fun. I was like, whatever. I didn't feel like a lot of self-judgment about like how I was meowing that day. Um, but uh, for for Konico, um, sometimes it was a little harder because I, 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 you just get in your head about it, and that's what's great about having a director outside yourself because they're like that's great. And you're like, well, even if you didn't think it was great, you're trusting that they have a vision overall, but it's me. It's my vision. And I'm like, uh, let me try it again. Let me try it again. Even if it's like already, like, it's fine. Like I, I sometimes I'll overthink it and overdo it. But luckily also for that character, I've been doing her for, you know, four seasons now. So I can snap into it pretty quick and just remember that little, that little attitude she's got, that little demeanor and snap back into it. Plus, her lines are really fun to say. So it just kind of depends, you know, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's like, just get, I, I, I gotta get out of my own way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, how hey. you doing? Great, how are um, you? I have a question. For Food Wars, 
that scene where Megumin had the food battle with Ryo. How did it feel to like have to use constantly different words and stuff in the <laughs> JoJo Bazaar type of fight scene? Um, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I think I had some trouble with some of those. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, that was like me going, damn it, damn it. <laughs> like, you know, like having to do a couple, several takes of those to kind of get those out. But also fun, like getting to be like melodramatic like that. It could be really big and like all of that is, is, is fun. But that's what's cool about that show. I felt like you could like learn a lot about actual food <laughs> and all of that. Like learn all those things. Like what was that one giant fish that she had to cook? I don't know. That was weird. That was a weird one for sure. I know, I, and that's what I mean. Like it's all real things. Like they're all real cooking skills and like foods that they're making. It's very bizarre, but very awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question. Uh, how did how did you feel like as a person voicing a character that was always known as like the underdog, saying, "Oh, why well, she been in this competition and everything like that." I didn't mind it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, to me, it gave her somewhere to grow. It gave her somewhere to, to, you know, come from like someone that's mousy to like someone who was like, you know what, I can do this. Like even amid, amongst all of these, um, maybe kind of legacy type people or people that like she thought should, that kn she knew she sh that should be in this competition, and for her to still like find her voice and find her confidence, it was it was kind of cool to have somewhere to grow with that character. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you ever turned down a role because you feel you couldn't properly voice the character? No. <laughs> well then. But I thought I did do something for like a private like indie project um, about six months ago or so, and I thought it was for like sometimes they'll do like what's called like a pilot kind of thing, just to kind of shop it around and like sell it around and like see what happens. And so you kind of don't know if this project will ever get off the ground or if it's just like something fun you did one time. And I had a really good time, but I thought if they ask me to do that again, I really don't know if I could or I'd, I'd have to like limit and say, I can only do one hour of this a day. Cause I, and, and it was my own fault. <laughs> like I tell people this all the time and I didn't follow my own voice. Never audition with a voice that you can't maintain, but I did. <laughs> Because I honestly, honestly, it was one of those, like, I was like, I'm not going to get this. So I just, like, went for it, you know? And, like, that's the funny thing about the universe is, like, because I just, like, took a leap. They were like, yes, we want you to do that voice. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, and so I got laryngitis that week. Because that was also the week that I recorded um, my episode of Pop Team Epic, um, which was also a lot of, like, like kind of stuff. Um, I think... Gosh, I think my episode comes out this week on Toonami, which we did uh, dub the songs, y'all. So I'm excited! <laughs> the Earth, Wind, and Fire! Yes! What was the voice like? Could you describe it? Um, okay, so it was like a, I think, what was it? It's a famous, like, historical Texan, and I don't know why I can't remember. What, Publica? No, no, no. Are we talking about that voice or the other voice? No, the you're voice like, that you're saying. Oh, yeah. It was like a Davy Crockett or, or, or something. But they wanted me to sound like a dog at the same time. <laughs> and so it also it was like a drill sergeant. Y'all, I don't know. But it was like a lot of... Like a lot of like that, of like screamy, kind of like really rough on my throat, like drill sergeanty, trying to sound like a man. It just was not sustainable for me <laughs> for very long. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask about that, but I, I think you're, you're part A or part B with, with Let's Pop Together, it's called Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm hmm Or isn't it called, because it's Let's Dance Together, or something like it's Earth, Wind, and Fire, but it's yeah. Let's Pop Together. Pop Together. <laughs> I saw, I, I, do you ever watch Toonami just to see how you did? Or? Yeah, I want to. I think my episode's coming out this week. Yeah. But I was going to say, I, I, some actors don't watch it. I go, why not? You want to see what the end result is because you were in the booth the whole time. Why, why wouldn't you see the fruits of your labor? Some people don't like to. They don't like to hear it, um, which is understandable. Like Sometimes you're like, oh, God. It's just weird to hear yourself. But, but that show's so fun. I definitely want to watch it. But as Tom says, nothing can much prepare you for it. <laughs> as Tom says... 
That's accurate. I find that very they, accurate. They also did the manga, uh, Girl Drop is actually getting a spinoff. The Girl Drop parody thing. Awesome. And it, August, I think so, after this con, after we're wiped out of money, the manga comes out, or in the fall. <laughs> cool, thank you so much. Yeah. There's also, there's also more dragon made in the manga, like there's, other dra there's one more dragon that tries to kill us all and then turns good. Illulu. You, you gotta stop it with these spoilers. Some people <laughs> maybe haven't seen things. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Alright. This is interesting because someone did brought up about doing voice acting in the basement. Well, for me, um, when it comes to do some work, especially when I do programming for as a hobby, I like, to, I like to work at home. Like I like to go in my bedroom and do some programming on the bedroom. And many, many software developers like to do programming at home. And I can say the same thing with voice actors. Sometimes when they need to practice for a new anime or, for, for a new, or to voice on a new game, they sometimes practice at home. So do you do that? Do you, do, do you practice voice acting at home? Like you go in your bedroom and you practice voice acting or you don't do it? Um, I, I wouldn't say that I, I really practice it like at home, no, but I, I guess an example of something I might do is just auditions. I mean, that's a version of, of practicing, of always kind of trying out new things and like, you know, expanding what you think you can do because you get a different character description and you think, why not? I'll go for that. Just like that other one I was telling you about that I probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just try new things and like you see where your voice can go yeah. and you see what your where your imagination takes you for that particular role and you never know. Maybe you'll get it. Maybe you won't. Um, so that's the best I can say about that. Yeah. All right. Hello again. Hi. Hey. Um, um, you voiced many characters over your uh, years of uh, voice acting. I just wanna, I just wanna know: Have you, have you ever felt like a special connection to one of the, to one of the characters, and, and if so, uh, which one? I'm so sorry. Do you mind saying that one more time? Um, yeah, um, you've done so many characters over the years, and I was just wondering if you felt like you had a special connection with one of your characters, or you empathized with them. You know, in, in if so, yeah. which one? Um, two come to mind. Uh, the one is from probably one of my favorite projects of all time, which is uh, Wolf Children. I played Yuki in Wolf Children. Um, I really relate to that, like, in, in a lot of ways, and it just really stuck with me. Um, my father passed when I was little, so I had a lot of uh, similarities with Yuki, and, like, playing that was, like, so... It was very emotional. Um, and then the other one is Hachin from Michiko and Hachin. It was just such a cool, different journey, and to get to play opposite of Monica Rial for 24 episodes and like just following that journey was really, really exciting. So those two really kind of stuck with me in my heart as like you know, as favorites like that. Yeah. Right. Hey, can we close those doors? Thank you. Someone? Would that be cool? It's kind of distracting me. I feel like ADD. I'm like, what's happening? What's going on over there? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, no, you're good. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, outside of voice acting, what are some of your favorite hobbies outside of your career, I guess? What do you enjoy on your free time? Free time? Yeah. What's that? If, no, fair enough. Kidding. If you have any. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I still love entertainment. Um, and so I binge watch a lot of stuff, a lot of Netflix, a lot of this, a lot of that. Um, I'm also into yoga and trying to be into exercise, trying to be into it. <laughs> uh, so sometimes I'll try like different new classes and stuff like that. Um, I love going to see plays. I got to see two Shakespeare in the parks this past weekend. I guess I'm still into all the different entertainment things like that. Reading books, hanging out with my cat. <laughs> I love eating food, lots of food. I guess, I don't know if that's a hobby, but... I, I, it can be. Is food a hobby? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm into all that. I'm also really into like all the kind of like spirituality type stuff. So I read a lot and I, uh, I meditate and uh, I, I've seen Deepak Chopra speak a lot and yeah, that kind of thing. Um, I'm really bad at video games, so I don't play them. I get really bad motion sickness. My boyfriend constantly wants me to watch him play. What is that? Why do you guys like that? Why do you like it when girls watch you play games? Anyways, I don't know, but I can't really do it because I get nauseous. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'll sit next to you and like do a smaller game on my phone that doesn't make me dizzy 
while you play yours. But um, yeah. And yeah, I love traveling too. So that's why I really love getting to do conventions. It's so cool to come and see new places and meet new people. Yeah, is this your first time down in South Florida? Uh, no, I've been to uh, Miami. I actually did Animate Miami like five years ago. So yeah. Okay. I've been down here. And I also did a, uh, a national tour of a children's theater show once where I got to go all over. And we went up through a bunch of places in Florida. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Hi. Um, I just, I watched Dragon Maid for the first time last night, the dub. The whole thing? Not the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> like, three or four episodes. Oh, yay! And, um, Kana is my favorite character. She reminds me Thank of my you. little sister. Because she's like that, like, <laughs> size and adorableness. Oh. And so my question is, um, how do you get into the mindset of, like, a little, like, girl that loves cute things and is just adorable but also a badass? Um... The badass part, I, I don't know, but um, I feel like it's just, it's, I don't know, like my inner child just comes out. Like, I feel like it's so natural and I've, you know, I think it's also like if you've ever had like a pet or a cat or something, you can like imagine kind of that way that you speak to them, like is almost like you're a child kind of thing. I don't know, it just kind of comes, I guess it comes naturally for me. I don't know how to explain that to you, like... How to just, but I think I've been playing children for so long. Like, even on stage, like, I continually am cast as a child, I think, because um, I look really, I have small features and I'm very short. Um, so, uh, I, I don't know. I wish I had some magical answer. It's just, it's, okay. it just, it was, it's just easy for me. It was fun to see a To act like that, a five year old. Right. It was just fun to see a character that reminded me of my sister because I haven't seen her in like five months. So it was, it was fun. I well, was I hope like, you get to see her. Oh, thanks. And you'll like the rest of it when you continue watching it. <laughs> that, sorry, I keep uh, popping up. Don't, but sorry for the spoilers if I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all good. What? It's all good. Yeah. And. I get nervous around, you know, celebrities, kind of like your motor mouth. <laughs> Deku going, <laughs> the Deku muttering. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. I, I actually have a question myself. Yeah. Um, I'm very intrigued by how our, our paths we take in our careers kind of go in different directions. Uh, for example, I read that you went to school for music. So when you got into voice acting, was it like, oh, well, there's an audition for this role. I'll try it and see what happens. And then that's kind of what took your path into becoming an actor. Or did you want to be an actor and just also study music? Or how did that work out? For example, I went to university to study acting and dance. And somehow I ended up becoming a professional wrestler. Like my, my path went from here and then I ended up somehow getting into a gig and now I'm completely over here. And I find that very intriguing. Like for you, I, I'm not really sure, maybe this is something you wanted, you were trying to pursue, but like, it looks like, I guess according to paper, you were into music, then you got into voice acting and now you're getting into directing. Is this like all like, hmm, let's see what happens. Or no, I really want to do this, this is what I'm pursuing. So like, like is this uh, your life? Is it more happenstance, or this is these are my goals, and I want to achieve these goals? Um, I think it's a mix, but I think that that's interesting that that's where you ended up because it's all performance, right? Like it's all um, some type of performance. And I had been doing like plays and acting like that since I was very little, and been on stage okay, so singing, acting. yeah, since I was very little. Um, I just think like for a long time, I thought I want to be a singer, I want to be a singer, I want to do music. Um, and then when I got into school, it was a very long journey for me. Uh, I didn't really like studying music. I liked performing it. I liked singing it. I liked doing it. And by the time I was in my last two years of undergrad, um, I was basically only hanging out with like all the theater department. I couldn't <laughs> switch my major at that point, but like I was, those were all my friends. Like those were my people. I didn't want to do a lot of opera anymore. I didn't really wasn't into that because I was mostly into jazz as a musician and uh, I didn't get to do a whole lot of that towards the end. It's, it's very weird like how these certain degrees kind of try and put you in boxes sometimes. 
Um, and I, I finished it, and I'm really glad that I, I got my education and, like, finished that. Like, that was a really uh, big goal that I had for my life. But I, you know, after that, like, I continued to do a lot of plays, and, like, that's more what I was pursuing. Uh, I also was, like, in some bands and stuff like that. But it all informs each other. And so getting that audition was something that I wanted and had been wanting for a long time and, you know, building it from there. And, like, the directing thing, that was something I... I never really felt like I, had, I was confident enough to, like, pursue. But then one day, um, I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to ask the question. Like, it, there's no hurt in, like, taking a leap and, like, asking the question, like, putting it out there that I'm interested in learning how to do this and, like, doing it. And then they were like, oh, um, are you ready to do it in three weeks? <laughs> so then I just threw me into the deep end. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that because I don't think you learn to swim any quicker than if they just throw you in. Um, and so I went from there. But, it, you know, singing is your voice. Like, and so all of that prepared me. All of that, that knowledge of being in choir and being in show choir. Oh, yeah, I was in show choir. It was awesome. Um, you know, informed your performance. Like, you're still performing. You're learning how to do that. So that's why I say to anyone who is interested in doing any of this for a career that, like, all of that is, is valuable and all of that is knowledge and all of that is practice for you to do that. Um, just like I'm sure all of your acting and, and, and dancing, to me, that completely informs wrestling in my mind. Like, very much the yeah, very like, much you're the using same, so. your body and you're still... I don't know if you're doing, like... Um, the more performative kind of wrestling or the like the hardcore like it's it's uh like like the stuff you see on tv like wwe type stuff yeah then that's 100 percent. you were prepped for that you were ready yeah. to go you were just like this is the niche that like interests me like and you know s somehow life led you there and you took yeah. a leap and then you were like i like this so I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It, it kind of shows it, me. It, like sometimes things, <laughs> things like can seem like, like happenstance and it's all a risk and like you're taking it and you're trying to like just see what, what, what sticks, you know, but it all is kind of informing all of it. Um, but I, it, they were goals that I had for the most part, but like getting those opportunities, I, I never really knew when they were going to happen or how they were going to happen. Yeah. Do you see yourself pursuing more directing in the future or going, focusing, still focusing more on acting? Uh, I see myself hopefully continuing with both, but um, I'm now full-time at Funimation, so I'm going to get to be doing a lot more than That's I was really before. Because cool. I was doing one show a season and now I'm doing two shows a season. So um, I'm excited. I've only been doing that for three months now, so I'm excited to keep going and like join, be a part of all those people that like I feel like raised me and now I like work with them. So it's kind of... It, it sometimes feels surreal to be like, I work here every day now. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. We, uh, we have a few more minutes, so we'll get through these questions. Thank all you. Right. Thank you for waiting. I just so, had to ask that. All right. My fa one of my favorite characters that you voiced is Kana, which I already said that. But um, So I have a question. What is, what is your favorite anime character, especially the ones that you voice acted on? Um, it's it, favorites are hard. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard. Uh, Kana is one of my yeah. newer favorites. Yeah. Osho, like I just wish that I could hang out with her every day. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, like I, I said before, Yuki and Wolf Children, Hachin and Michiko and Hachin. I gotta give props to Carla from Fairy Tail. Uh. <laughs> she and I have been hanging out for many years. She's grown, she's been through a lot, you know, so I love me some Carla. Um, Senna from Hog and I, she's ridiculous. Uh, another newer favorite is definitely Guri from Love Tyrant. Um, and, hmm, it's hard, it's so hard. I don't know. I'll let you know if I think of any more. <laughs> I love them all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi. Uh, I uh, I just want to know um, how you like came about to uh, to being the voice of uh, Eve Genoard in uh, Bacano. Auditioned. I auditioned for that. Did, like, did you That's... really like? Did you like like you like look for it? Not your agent. Like, I was just wondering. Like, yeah. So I all of my stuff voice acting wise is not done through an agent. Like I got Sick. all of that on my own. So nice. That was. Um, 
I think that was Tyler. He asked me to audition for that specific role. Um, I think he asked me to audition for that, and like I can't remember. There are a few other ladies in that show that he asked me to audition for, um, but I'm, I have a sneaking suspicion he had me in mind for that one, um, just because of the type of voice that she was. Um, but that that show is is really cool. It's really it's really complicated. You have to like really pay attention to what's going on there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi there. Uh, actually, I uh, was wondering, uh, I apologize if you do not remember this very well, because I know you work on a lot and it was one of the Simon roles, but uh, it, uh, you've talked a lot about with the roles you like, a lot of the memories, people talking about the more sassy characters or a lot of the zaniness for comedy. What was it like doing Akiba Strip with Mayanaka when she was the straight man? <laughs> Well, I found that like she did get to have comedic moments still, even being the straight man, because like she was like always the one being like, "What is this? Like, what are you even doing?" But I'm um, being being surrounded by all that wackiness was really fun, and I mean, like the the ramen eating episode. I mean, she still had her her moments, <laughs> but I don't mind playing the straight man. I mean, you know, you, you've got to have someone to play off to make those moments work, to make the, the puzzle fit together. Yeah. I love uh, the ramen episode, and I also like the Yu-Gi-Oh episode because I love She had one of her favorite lines, my favorite lines on that one. I can't remember what it is, but that's one of those ones where it was like a moment of like, what it, where like they're all like going crazy, but then it, sh it shoots to the table and they're just sitting there with their, their cards and she's like, what is this? Like, what's going on? I love showing that to my friends because I'm the one playing the game and they're the ones watching. And uh -huh. they're, it's like, they're like, yeah, that's us, that's us. Uh-huh, I relate. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Jade Saxon, oh, so, much. so much for talking with us and answering all of our questions. Are you signing uh, today? I time? am. I'm signing at 3 o'clock and at 6 o'clock, I believe. Yeah. So 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Make sure you guys go by her table. Say hi. Buy some stuff. Get some pictures. And uh, keep her entertained, right? So everyone, give it up for Jade Saxon. Thank you so much, Ladies everyone. And gentlemen, we